The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. Chapter 4, Gnana Karma Sanyasi, Yoga of Ending Karma in Knowledge. We all want to retire, but there is no real practical way to retire. You always do something. You can only retire mentally. So when you don't take your actions to be at work, you retire, then you enjoy it. So when we change our mental attitude about our actions, then you retire from the actions. So the only way Bhagavan says to end your actions, because these actions are binding, and I want to get out of this bondage. He said, you have to get rid of your actions. You have to retire from your actions. And the only way to retire is in the knowledge of who you are and what actions are all of So in chapter 3, we have seen Karma Yoga, and see how to gradually liberate yourself from your actions by changing your attitude towards actions. And now you say, well, how can I then completely relieve myself of this burden is to realize who I am. So this chapter talks about what is the nature of the self. Ajaha pisan avyayatma. Aya self is ajaha, unborn. Avyayatma, immutable, imperishable. That's the real nature of mind. Bhutanam isvaropisan. I am the Lord of all beings. All beings are beings because of my presence in them. I am who I am and you are who you are. And the donkey is who the donkey is. Because that life which is pulsating through them, the presence of that omnipresent self makes people who they are and beings who they are. So that's why he is the Lord of all the beings. Lordship is someone who has a control over my life is my Lord. So in feudal system, the guy who owned the estate was a lord. Even today, he's a landlord and a renter. He has the control over your property, therefore he's a landlord. You don't, you're a renter. So he is the Bhutana Mishwarabhisan, Prakrutin Swam Adhisthaya, Sambhavami Atmamayaya. You and I come into existence because of the self, but because of the maya, we think we are individual egos. We are the individuals. But someone who has a complete identification with his self, he realizes this is just an appearance. It's just an illusion that I have taken a limited form. I am not limited. So the difference between us and the avatar is, we think we are limited. Avatar knows all the time he is not limited. His role in this life is limited. So Krishna can say, I am unlimited. He knew his role in this life, but he never bound himself with his role. He said that presiding over my prakriti, I come time and again to regulate dharma. So yada yada hi dharma siglani bhavati. Dharma itself is a self-regulating principle. You don't really need to do anything about Dharma. Water, you don't have to train water to seek its own level. Because it's self-regulating, it's Dharma. My Dharma is also self-regulating. So when I get out of my Dharma, I cease to be what I was. And I'll become something else. When I came to this country... There were no jobs for architecture because I came in 82 and that was a recession time. So there were no jobs. So people said, uh, Neil, the best thing you can do. And I was in Houston at the time, so the oil economy was still tail end of it. The best thing, if you can become a pipe designer. It was pipe drafting, pipe drafting. It's a pipe drafting is a lot of money. So compared to architecture, you do pipe drafting, all those pipes for the oil company. You will make more money. 
And I said, no matter how much money there is, I won't be able to do it. So I'm an architect. That's my dharma, to design building. I can design pipes. You know. No matter, I may have to suffer through unemployment as long as I don't get a job. I'll do something else. But by very nature, I'm an architect. I have to design buildings. And then I finally, some I worked for some contractor. And he said, well, I, I think you will, be, you will do very well if you continue in the contracting. I left the job right away. He is going to deviate me from my dharma. <laughs> so what is it? If I stop being an architect or stop designing buildings, I'm not an architect. It's as simple as that. So dharma is a self-regulating principle. To remain who I am, I have to remain in that dharma. As soon as I deviate from that dharma, dharma itself will eliminate me from that existence. Stop practicing architecture, I'll be eliminated from architectural <coughs> societies, architectural communities, all the architectural duties and responsibilities. I'm not something else. So Bhagavan says, Yada Yada Hi Dharma Siglani Bhavati. In this world, the role is assigned to each things and beings. If they deviate from the dharma, I will eliminate them. Some regulating principle, some agency to do that. I will take avatara. I will be a catalyst to make the change for those who are deviating from the dharma to eliminate from that society, that community, that, that part of this universe. Abhyutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam sujamyam. When there is a rise of adharma, a lot of people are thinking that this is dharma, but actually it's adharma. So when that happens, when dharma is misunderstood by beings and people, and as the last time we have discussed, it's only for human beings because we have free will, that we can deviate from our dharma. We can be vegetarians and also can be non-vegetarians. We don't know whether we were designed as vegetarians or not. <laughs> Elephant knows he's designed as vegetarian. A yeah, lion knows he is designed as carnivore. But we don't know because of our free will that we deviate from our dharma. When it becomes unbearable for the society. Swami used to say that you also, you know, Surjami Aham, you also do that during springtime. He said, when there are a few weeds in your garden, you say, it's okay. You don't pay much attention to it. Then gradually a yard becomes filled with weeds. Now then less grass and more weeds. Then one Sunday you put on your you know yard work clothes and say, I need to take care of this. You will tolerate it to a point. Let the weeds have good time. And then one Sunday you say, No, this is it. Paritrana Sadhuna for the protection of the grass, you know. Vinasaja Duskritam, all the way. <laughs> so, time and again, you as the Lord will come and set your yard right. Bhagavan said, This is my yard, I have to do the same thing. Paritranaya sadhunam, Vinasaja Duskritam. Somebody asked Swami Tijuma, and they said, Well, if that's the case, why Bhagavan is not coming now? He said, Bhagavan clearly said, Paritranaya sadhunam. If lesser evil is fighting with greater evil, Bhagavan has nothing to do with it. Let them figure it out how to kill each other. <coughs> they will eliminate each other automatically. Bhagavan doesn't have to interfere. It is only that evil is not letting the good practice good. Then only Bhagavan comes. In our case, it's a lesser evil fighting greater evil. <laughs> it's still evil. And then, therefore, he said, Bhagavan doesn't have to come yet. Paritranaya sadhana. For what dharma sansthapana arthaya? To establish dharma again. As I said, it's a self-regulating principle. It will time and again, it will reset dharma so that the cycle will continue as it was designed. We take our car once in a while for tune-up and wheel alignment and we tolerate it to a point when it starts making noise while you're driving. So I need to take it to the garage and calibrate it. So that is a self 
regulating principle to calibrate itself. The time and again, it can get out of its alignment. And Bhagavan said, I is the self. I created this universe out of my own self, out of my own maya. And I let it run through its own laws, the laws of nature. The laws of nature are self-regulating. So we don't have to control and go to the law of gravity and all that. We don't want to get up in the morning and oh, let's make sure the law of gravity is working. Otherwise, how am I going to go down to the staircase? Because suddenly if I try to go down, I start flying into the ceiling. So I have to be very conscious that the law of gravity is working every day. No, we don't have to. But my own behavior I have to regulate because I have free will. I can be doing right. I also can be doing wrong. My free will is guided by mind and intellect. And my mind and intellect can deceive me in doing something which is not right. I say, well, I should not be doing this. But the mind will put an argument and say, no, I think it's okay, Neil. You know, other people are doing it, so what's wrong in it? Then a gradual I'll convince myself, it's okay. Everybody is doing it, cheating on 1040. Because other people are doing it, I come to think that it's okay. But my conscience tells me it's not right. But my mind and intellect will say, that's okay. And that's where I suffer. So Bhagavan said, that's why I have to time and again rise in your own heart. is your own inner voice. Paritranaya sadhana. If I have few good thoughts which are still trying to, to direct me toward the right path. But many bad thoughts are avoiding me to exercise my right to follow the good thoughts. Then that voice will rise in my heart. Because at least those good thoughts were propelling me to find what is right. So that's what Bhagavan said, I will rise in your heart as your avatar. And that will redeem you from the wrong that you were going to do. And when will that happen? Janma karma che me divyam evam yo vetti tattvataha. When you will realize that in its essence, I am the divine being. That this life is divine. It's given to me for learning. To rise out of limitations. Katva deham punar janma. Once I realize what is the real truth, what is my real nature, then when I get out of this existence, when I exhaust all the vasanas and karmas of this existence, I will not take the new vasana. If last time I have experienced something and that was not really enjoyable, I somehow suffered through that experience, but then what will I do next? I don't want to go there again ever. Because I realized that this is a painful existence. It is when we go back and forth, I enjoyed some, but suffer some. So let me go for the enjoyment. In the bargain, I also suffer. So that's why we have punarapi janamam, punarapi maranam, because our attachments are taking us back to that existence. Even though we suffered through it, we forget at times that there will be sufferings also attached to this pleasures. So say, but my divine nature is omnipresence and omnipotence, he will get out of this punarjanma. So, tektva deham punarjanma na eti mameti sarjana. He comes to being my own self. Vita raga bhayak krodha manmaya maam upasvitaha. So, the technique now is given. And we have discussed before, the root cause is the attachment and its byproducts. Raga, bhaya and krodha. Raga is the root cause. Byproducts of bhaya and akrodha, fear and anger are the byproduct. Once I realize that that's the root cause, if I start getting out of attachment, bhaya and akrodha will not be there. He said, therefore, the goal is to get rid of attachment. But I can't get rid of attachment unless I take refuge in something higher. He says, maam upashritaha, one who take refuge in me. Then me is the me, the I, I, I keep reciting all my life. If I take refuge in my I and do not rely on my body, mind and intellect to give me that peace and happiness which I'm seeking, then I'll be liberated. Vitaraga, liberated from attachment. Once I live in attachment, I'll be liberated from fear and anger. 
बहवो ज्ञान तपसा पूता मद्भावम आगता हा अगेन वी हैव टू बी रिमाइंडेड दोबारा यू आर नॉट द गिनी पे द ट्राइड एंड ट्रू मेथड मेनी ग्रेट पीपल बाय द फायर ऑफ नॉलेज ज्ञान तपसा वंस द नॉलेज टेक्स प्लेस दैट इट इज स्प्रिंग टाइम एंड आई एम गोइंग टू सफर थ्रू एलर्जीज देन आई गो एंड गेट द अलेग्राज एंड स्टॉक इट अप फॉर द होल स्प्रिंग टाइम द फायर ऑफ नॉलेज is what will redeem me from my limitations so many with their fire of knowledge that this body is not me my mind is not me my intellect is not me let that self rise in their bosom her madbhavam magata ha identified with me right now we are swami tejmananda say you are in a complete state of samadhi of what body identification this is me that's not me this is me that's not me this is me complete state of samadhi of my mind and intellect this is me my ideas nobody has to remind me this is me even when i'm thinking about something else i know this is me so that's a state of samadhi you cannot shake me off that identification he said when you have that samadhi that this is not me then madhva magata now you identified with me the all present self as we have discussed this room space right now we are in a complete state of samadhi this room space is limited space because we are identifying with the walls floor and ceiling as an architect i can perceive this space without floor ceiling and walls you can see the space in its own reality and then you can modify it whatever you want in your mind the same way bhagwan said when i identify with the supreme self i can take avatar as i want whatever the role i need to play i will then present myself in the same so that's the purna avatar of bhagwan who is always identified with the self bahavo gnana tapasa many have attained this self by just identifying with that self ये यथा माम प्रपद्यंते ताम तथैव भजामि हम व्हाई देन यू एंड आई आर नॉट एक्सपीरियंसिंग दैट सेल्फ द सेम सेल्फ इज फंक्शनिंग थ्रू ऑल ऑफ अस हैज द सेम पावर भगवान इज सेम टू एवरीबॉडी बट देन यू एंड आई आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग लाइफ इन अ वेरी डिफरेंट वेज इट्स व्हाई दैट इज बिकॉज एज द लिमिटेड बीइंग द वे वी इनवोक आवर सेल्फ दैट्स हाउ वी एक्सपीरियंस द लाइफ if i invoke myself as a selfish being that's how i'll experience the life i invoke myself as a servant of the society well that's how i will experience life so said the way i invoke myself my self will support me to pursue that path ye yathamam prapadyante tam tathaiva bhajami aham mama vartmanu vartante manushyaha partha sarvasaha whether you think you are a religious being and believing in bhagwan or not but say you are following my path only in other words you are only pursuing your goal by taking support of your own self as long as i am alive i will be able to pursue the good or evil if i'm dead there is no good or evil because the principle which is enabling me to do good or evil is the one and the same is my life force that is enabling me to do what is right and wrong so therefore bhagwan said mama vartman vartante manushya ha partha sarvasa all beings are following my path in a sense whatever i make them enable to do but limitation of their equipment will lead them in different directions why some people can build huge businesses in no time they are like thousands of employees and billions of dollars and other people make the same efforts can go past you know 10 employees what is that you are not an entrepreneur that's not a business you just have a job so there is a difference between the reason he said then why everybody is not following the same goal of finding the ultimate happiness why people are caught into this little packets of happiness and then suffer through life through unhappiness he said kankshatah karmanam siddhi yajanta he devata 
क्षिप्रम ही मानु से लोके सिद्धिर भवती कर्म जा वी आर लुकिंग फॉर इंस्टेंट रिजल्ट इंस्टेंट ग्रेटिफिकेशन इन इट्स ईजियर टू गेट इन दिस वर्ल्ड ऑफ मैन मानु से लोके इन दिस वर्ल्ड इट इजियर टू गेट दिस सेंसुअल प्लेजर दिस रूम इज वेरी हॉट आई टर्न ऑन दी ए सी एंड पुरी डॉन बोर्ड ओवर द टेम्परेचर स्टार्ट फीलिंग कंफर्टेबल सो आई फिगर आउट दैट इट इजियर to get the pleasures in the sense levels if i can connect my senses with the object which give me pleasure pleasure will be right there that's much easier in this world so we are working hard to keep connecting this my senses with the objects of my pleasures I want to listen to this music i want to read this book i want to do all the things which i think will give me happiness i'm constantly trying to achieve that because i know that there will be result right there once i have that starbucks cup of coffee i'll feel good so our life is wasted in just achieving the short goals so we don't have the energy left to think about the greater goal kankshata karmanam siddhi having the desire to get the success in my actions in my actions are in the end my senses contacting the world of objects in their experience is my action yajanta ih devata that particular devata i'll follow as i say as an architect i have to invoke my devata of sight people ask me once in a while say so what style of architecture nil you follow i say i have only one style what my eyes see as appropriate when i see something and it looks good that's my style it does not matter what style of architecture i'm working my building has to only two thing it should be functional so that it provide the function which is designed for when i look at it it looks good it makes me feel good for the user it does not matter if it's in a traditional style a contemporary your house may be the best example of contemporary style or whatever with the most uncomfortable house good for magazines not for living in so what is good good that is your senses you have developed and you are now invoking those devatas and say my eyes will confirm that this is good so to achieve that level of proficiency you have to invoke the devata of your sight it basically the your potential to use your vision your potential to he- use your hearing like my teacher i say oh no no you you missed that your note this was not right said, how do you know subha says i can't even figure out he said no no you have to train your ear karmanam siddhim yajanta iha devata we will follow our path of what i think will give me happiness and then invoke that particular devata and swami ji says in devata in case is your sense organ of perception you will train that and you will follow and invoke and then you get that siddhi when you get that siddhi you will feel good the problem bhagwan said is that's not the complete siddhi only partial siddhi so that's why we hear most of this great architects and great artists and they have terrible life you know because they were completely incomplete in rest of their development of life because they only pursued one devata and missed the holistic development with that we'll stop here if you find this podcast helpful please support it by donating any amount by going to the episodes website at neelbutt.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org thank you ओ सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्य कचिदुखभागे ओ शाति शाति शा 
हरि हरिओ श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरिओ